Welcome back everyone with an update on a newly formed system in the Western Atlantic. Unfortunately, hurricane season is not over yet. You can see here on the satellite image, a new system, Nicole, has formed in the Western Atlantic. Here's the Southeast United States to sort of orient you. Nicole has maximum winds of 45 miles per hour, a tropical storm strength is currently moving to the Northwest at nine miles per hour. But if we get into the projected forecast, um, this is what we're looking at. And the one thing I want you to note here is remember from our previous live streams, this orange area denotes the area or size of the wind field, the size of the tropical storm force winds. Look how big that orange area is. And it's, it's roughly the size of my hand. And if I sort of project it that along here on the forecast path, you could see when it gets here over Florida, it's going to cover a large portion of the Florida Peninsula. So I want you to think about that, the size, and we're probably going to have good chunks of the Florida Peninsula impacted by these, uh, these conditions. Now, a lot of people in Florida are still recovering from Ian. And I want to sort of you know, make sure that you don't think that this is going to be a major hurricane. We're not forecasting a major hurricane. We're not forecasting rapid intensification at this time. We think because it's very large that it's going to strengthen slowly as it approaches the Florida Peninsula and potentially impact the Florida Peninsula as a top end tropical storm or a bottom end hurricane, a category one hurricane. So again, not an EN situation, but still a potentially impactful system. So the Florida residents need to be taking this seriously, paying attention, and most notably here as I walk you through the existing watches that were just issued a few moments ago, who needs to be starting to get prepared? So the pink area on this graphic is a hurricane watch. Hurricane conditions are possible, possible within the watch area in about 48 hours here in Southeast Florida, possibly a little bit sooner here in the Northwest Bahamas. We'll talk about the timing in a second. So if you're in this pink area, which extends all the way down into Southeast Florida, you really gotta start getting prepared. And I'll walk you through the timing here in a second. The yellow area here is a tropical storm watch. So tropical storm conditions are possible somewhere within this area, generally within 48 hours. Now, you'll notice the absence of any watches and warnings on the west coast of Florida. That doesn't mean that those conditions aren't possible over there. It's just too soon for any potential watches. So don't, you know, keep your, if you're on the Florida west coast, uh, certainly pay attention and stay tuned to potential updates. The timing here, so for the Northwest Bahamas, the Northwest Bahamas conditions, tropical storm conditions spreading on shore uh, late in the day Tuesday. So if you're gonna make preparations, make sure they're done early on Tuesday or more ideally get them completed by sundown today. And then here in the Florida Peninsula, conditions are spreading on shore during the day, Wednesday, possibly as soon as Wednesday morning along the Florida East Coast. So if you're along the Florida East Coast here, um, you need to have your preparations done by sundown Tuesday. Sundown Tuesday, that's tomorrow. So make sure you're taking that timing into consideration. Now, when we look at coastal flooding or the potential for coastal flooding, we're at the time of year where tides generally run high anyway, without a storm. So we would be having higher than normal tide and potential for uh, coastal flooding even without the presence of Nicole. So when you have Nicole with this big, large wind field and all this onshore flow pushing water towards the coastline in advance, the potential for coastal flooding exists for a large portion of the eastern coast of the Florida Peninsula from southeast Florida all the way up through Jacksonville into, into southeast Georgia. You, and keep in mind that this is some of the same areas that were impacted by Ian, so the, dune, the dunes have been severely eroded. And so the potential for coastal flooding, uh, possibly, possibly life-threatening flooding, uh, certainly exists. And if we look at the numbers here, generally three to five feet, the potential for three to five feet of storm surge flooding from uh, Palm Beach all the way up to uh, southeast, uh, southeastern Georgia with a two to four down here in southeastern um, Florida. So this would be Broward and, and Miami-Dade. Uh, now, looking at the rainfall, and here we've blown out the forecast to give you a more holistic view. This is a seven-day precipitation uh, forecast or potential here. And the reason I did this is to show that you know, it would be easy to become focused on Florida, but as, as Nicole sort of turns back into the southeastern United States um, at days four and five, 
or Friday and Saturday, um, the potential to spread significant rainfall along the southeastern United States exists. So Raleigh, Durham, or points from I-95 east in North Carolina, coastal South Carolina, or the low country of South Carolina in Georgia, certainly a high potential for rainfall. And then especially here in the east coast of Florida, we've got a high potential for significant rainfall and flooding for east central Florida. Now, since we're in the watch phase, what are we doing? If you're in the watch area, this is what you need to be doing. So this is, this is the time to start taking actions here. I know it's late in the year and everybody's exhausted, but we gotta, we gotta start taking action, uh, especially if you're in one of these watch areas. So make sure your disaster kit is available, up to date, check it, pull it out, make sure it's handy, make sure it's up to date, especially food and water. And one that people tend to always forget is make sure your prescriptions are up to date, that you've got enough prescriptions on hand to carry you through a week or so. Keep your gas tanks full. Just go ahead and top them off. Uh, be ready for this. Make sure your electronics are charged up. Uh, so your cell phones, any sort of backup batteries, because you want to make sure that you can stay in communication and stay on top of the latest information. And remember, the forecast can and will change over the next couple of days. So don't get locked into any one scenario. Continue to check back, stay tuned, and, and see the, the evolution of the forecast. We will be providing you these updates once a day or as necessary, twice a day. And that is it from the National Hurricane Center.